First time I ever seen this mower, guys, I caught a little glimpse of it over on Instagram, and I immediately got on the phone with Ed Wright. He's the owner of Wright Mowers, and asked him if there was any way I could at least get my hands on one of these things and give it a test run. Well, he shipped one over to my house with no restrictions. I want you to cut right through here. I don't know, let's give it a shot. I wrote it like I stole it, guys. I did things to this mower that I'd never do to one that I was actually paying for, and I filmed it all just for you guys. He didn't ask me to do a video. He didn't even ask me to take a picture of it. He didn't tell me what I could do or what I couldn't do. He dropped it off and walked away. Actually, to find out how this mower operated, I had to get on the phone with him. And after talking to him a couple times, I was so impressed that I decided to secretly record one of our phone calls. So we're gonna see what it's really like behind the scenes at Wright Mowers. Now before we get too far into today's video, I really want to hear from you because you guys have a ton of experience with lawnmowers. So I want to hear which ones you'd like the best and which ones you've had the most problems with because some of the people watching this video are going to be looking at your comments for guidance when they're trying to make their own purchase decision. And today guys, we're going to have a ton of fun and you're going to see me use and abuse this right mower for an entire season. And at the end of the video, we're going to wrap it all up and I'm going to let you know what I think about it. So let's get into it. What's your thoughts? Sure. Sure. Yeah, okay. okay, so Ed, what we what we were talking about was the the engineering and the customer feedback, right? Right. Yeah. All right. Tell me a little bit about that. I want to make sure I know I understand what it is you're you're referring to. Okay. So uh, I mean, I think this is where you're with that. It's just like yeah, how do we how do we go about making things that people want? And um, we've never mowed this slope sideways. I know one of the things I want, guys, is the efficiency of a stand-up mower, but the ability to handle steep slopes. It's always been up and down. On this slope, it's always been up and down, never sideways. Until today. Our best idea is to come from our customers saying, hey, why don't you just do this? Like take this and move the part over here and or add this and it's that direct one on one interaction with users. And also coming from having been a landscape company, just being very straightforward and realistic about what you needed and wanted and and taking that direct input and putting it to work. So you so you've on. designed your mowers based on what your customers tell you they want to see in on the mower. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And who does that, Ed? Is that is that do you have a, an engineering department or who who's the person responsible for something like that? My responsible for most of it. Our our founder Bill Wright, he's he's just pretty involved in that. Your dad. You mean your dad? Yeah. You know, some people downplay a family run business, but I think it's the best thing ever. That's why I wanted to make sure I pointed that out. So you know it's we we, we go to visit a lot of dealers, we visit a lot of users, we talk to a lot of people, different shows. And uh, they're saying, hey, you know, why don't we do it this way? There's no, there's no middle man. It's like, okay. And then we go home and we, we uh, put it in gear. We, we might make up some parts and out and say, hey, try this out. That's what you're talking about. And they say, yeah, it's close. But adjust this. And then we adjust it and we, we do it. So when you, say no you kind of when you say you send them out, do you actually send them out and you have customers test these things for you so you, you make sure you're actually getting real world feedback from these guys or yeah, what are you doing? Absolutely. Okay, okay, so yeah. these guys are putting it to the test, actually out on their job sites and then coming back to you and saying, hey, this works and that doesn't work and you're listening to them. I push this more to the extreme 
limits beyond anything that I've used my own mowers for. Extreme slopes, heavy, wet grass, soggy conditions that I would have literally sank any other place. And you're gonna see just how well it performed today. When we develop a new mower from scratch, we we run on like a five week cycle where we take, we, we convert the computer, grab the drawing board, make up all the parts and whatever. And then we just make all the work orders that go to the factory and our factory makes a one-off machine. We get that first machine to a landscaper and they start running it. And they're like, okay, well, I don't like this. And what about that? And if we did this, it'd be better. And I broke it more than once testing it. And part of putting it back together is when I started to even appreciate it more. Okay, what is rolling? All right, we're gonna talk about some user-friendly features that Wright has built into this thing to allow you guys to do some of the basic work on the mower yourself. You lose a belt, you drop the deck all the way down, you've got a few wing nuts, three on each side, you take those off, this will give you access to these panels. Once you pop these panels off, you pop these panels off, you have all your belts right here. I lost the belt. I'm gonna put it back on myself. The tools I'm gonna use, the tools God gave me. You can see the belt is right here. This is the belt I lost. Easy access wing nuts. Easy to pop back on, get back operational. You don't have to go to a shop. You don't have to do anything special. That's some of the innovative features that I'm finding Wright has built into these mowers. The more I use these mowers, the more I appreciate them. So then we, the next six weeks, we take all the feedback we had and we put that into the next version. And we'll go through like eight or ten versions like this before we go to go to production and it's landscapers talk with us one on one specifically what it is that they want. There's no, there's no middleman in that process. So really what it is, it's the lawn care community, it's the landscapers themselves that are developing the designs for right mowers. Is that right, Ed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's one thing I really like about what's happened more recently in the, in the social media side of stuff is that with as many people uh, local out there saying what they like and don't like, that's, that's, that's a whole other opportunity for us to sell this stuff in. It's not one of these situations where there's, you know, this big office building somewhere and a bunch of engineers just pushing stuff out. It's, there's, a, there's a back and forth interaction going on. You know, a lot of manufacturers, it's kind of scary to be engaged in that because your customers are going to be unhappy with some things that you've done and um, they'll hold you accountable. And that can be that can be ugly and bad things, but um, it takes courage because um, if you don't listen and respond and change the things that people don't like, uh, you're not going to be in business for them. So if the landscapers and lawn care community is not talking to you, you don't have a sense of direction. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you're dependent on these guys giving you feedback, both good and bad, and I'm going to guess that you need the negative feedback just as much as you need the positive feedback. Nobody wants to be bashed continually, but if you don't have things that you can improve, you can't continue to yeah. modify the machine and make it better and better and better for them. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And you, you run across the haters. There's haters out there that they just kind of complain about everything, and it's hard to take them very seriously. But there's other people that are very, very discerning users. They really know what they're doing with their operations, and they give negative feedback that's like really solid. And um, you got to take that really seriously. Take it home and, and uh, change what you're doing. Put that right back in production right away. Not wait for the next volley or any of that kind of stuff. Just change it and get it going. Hey Ed, here's some feedback for you. If you end up putting this four-wheeled monster into actual production, instead of calling it the right standard mower, just call it the right and stand mower. I love it. Marked up. Mark it up. Made just for you. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty big piece of it. I think we have no pretense of like, this is this is what we think the market should be doing and we're gonna push this stuff out. It's really just a, a call and response. You know, what people want is what we'll make. Now I know this right mower makes the slopes look easy, so I decided to follow right behind it on my Toro grandstand and you can watch me slide out. And then on 
top of it when I stepped off from the moor, I slid down the hill. Hey, we're, we're here to serve the, uh, the landscape industry and, and all the people that are in the community. Try to make, make their work better at the same time we're doing good to our employees here. So I see a lot of the bigger companies that they try to lead the industry, now I'm air quoting while I'm talking to you, by showing sure. landscapers what they should be doing and you're not doing that at all. What you're doing is you're following right on their tails. You're listening, instead of trying to tell landscapers what they're doing, you're asking landscapers what do they want done and you're listening closely and you've literally developed your whole company around listening to what they need and building that as quickly as possible, but not just building it and putting it out there. You're building it, you're giving it to them, you're asking them to feedback. And so it's, has this been almost a continual process through the evolution of your company that you basically put these out there, listen, modify, change, listen, modify, change, continue to evolve yeah. over and over again? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, you know there's, there's leading edge and there's bleeding edge. And a lot, of, a lot of companies, they want to be on that bleeding edge, but when users buy it, they're like, this is not really what I want, you know, it's good enough for me to buy, but it's, it's kind of too far out there. And then there's leading edge, where you're always changing, always improving, but it is right on the nose of what people are asking for, and that's, that's where you want to be. Now I want to show you the day we did the video shoot for the 3M hearing protection, which every single person that got a pair of that still uses today. So what I'll do is I'll put a link to that down below because I'll tell you straight up, I actually really like this product. It's one of the best products I've used. I'm in Costco, I found them. I couldn't even buy these if I wanted to because I don't have a membership here. I couldn't, I had literally no clue they did this. Look, I'm on the package. Dude, you've got to get over yourself. That is so cool. So what's happening here is I'm actually filming the video company, filming my crew while my crew does what they're supposed to be doing. Now the video company is paying me to let them film my crew work, which is earning money, which somehow either way all I know is I'm getting paid twice to mow this lawn today. We're doing an all day shoot covering 3M hearing protection for a 60 second video. Professional companies doing it. Like some of these other, other companies, it might take them three, four years to develop a product. So by the time that they, they hear that this is what people want, they're already getting it from other manufacturers by the time they come to market. And maybe even what was wanted is now changed. You know, something else is even better than that. And, and they're always kind of behind. You don't want to be there. So people can actually call you, Ed, and say, hey, look, yeah. I, I want this, that, or the other thing. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Or they can, you know, they can message me. I'm out there. Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Email. Email. We're not trying to hide behind anything. I can't always get what someone needs, but uh, we, we do everything we can to deliver on, on what people are saying. Especially if there's a couple people that are saying the same thing. We try to do that. Ed, did you know I was recording this entire conversation? Really? <laughs> That's what Jerry got. <laughs> he had no clue. He had no clue. <laughs> All right, guys, those extra set of tires really made a difference on this lawnmower, good and bad. The bad, whenever I made a turn with those extra set of tires, it tended to rip up the grass, so three-point turns were mandatory. Another bad thing is those tires would flatten down the grass, so if you tried to mow going backwards, your grass would be flat and you wouldn't get as good of a cut. But those extra set of tires made a world of difference on slopes. I could go with that mower nowhere that I could go with any of my other mowers at all. In fact, slopes that I could only push mow, I could easily and safely mow with this lawnmower. Plus, those extra set of tires helped me to float into places that I could have never gone before. It was, and it was eye-opening, talking to Ed, learning about the company, things that I would have never imagined, the way they operate, the customer feedback, those little details to me make a world of difference. If this video has helped you guys out, let me know in the comments down below and make sure you share your lawn mowing stories down below because some of the people watching this are going to use your comments as guidance to make their next purchasing decision. God bless you guys. Go get them.
That's some switchgrass.